boundaries, ladies. It is okay to have them. It is okay to set them up. It is okay to share your boundaries and express them to others. This is what's going to help you balance things and be able to juggle that career and motherhood. Boundaries will get you there. So if you're looking for one key answer of like, but Melissa, how do I do it? Boundaries. Boundaries is how you are going to balance and juggle it all. When they are clear for you and for other people, it makes life easier. You then can flow with motherhood. You then can flow with your career. But if there are no clean boundaries with who can come into your door at when at work, who can come into your office, who can send you an email at seven o'clock at night, and then you'll end up responding. Where's your boundary to set it down at six, right? Do you have it? Because it needs to be there. What's up, everyone? If you're looking to be inspired, motivated, educated, and entertained, you have come to the right place. Welcome to the Bomb Mom Podcast, the podcast where we explore your fitness, life mindsets, and actions that help you become unstoppable. You're worth it, and it's time to finally make changes in your life that will last you the rest of your life. Hey everyone, welcome to the Bomb Mom Podcast. I am Melissa Vogel, your host. Welcome to the show if you are brand new and welcome back if you are a returning listener. I'm excited to dive in today to the juggling act. (laughs) We all know that balancing act, that juggling act that we all struggle with as hard working parents. I can't wait to dive into this. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks and some insider stories and everything to kind of help you guys get going in the right direction to help you balance it all. Because as you grow, right, as a mom, as a career woman, you're working, you're trying to provide, you're doing all the things. Some of us are divorced and single parents, so it makes that struggle even more interesting There's a lot of changes that happen, and then there's a lot of guilt that comes with that, and it becomes this balancing act that you sit there and wonder, like, will I ever be able to figure this out? And the answer is yes, you will. And today's episode is all about helping you figure that out. So first, have to let you guys know, as you probably heard on the last couple episodes, we are opening up Bomb Mom this October. I'm so excited. So when you guys hear this show officially come out at the end of September 2003, we are opening the doors to a brand new onboarding group in October. So I had to make sure I say that right away because we don't open a new group every single month anymore. And we are opening one in October. And I'm really excited because this is your chance to jump in. So if you're a long time listener and you're like, oh my God, she talks about being a mom and I want to do it, but I don't know if I should. The answer is yes. The answer is now is the time. Get in. You deserve it. And we're going to transform you. And I love, 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 love onboarding groups in September and October because you get to get the new you into action before the holidays hit. So by the time Thanksgiving is here and then by the time Christmas hits and New Year's, you're already in a position of change and you will have one of the best holiday seasons ever. And going back to the episode, we are going to help you and coach you how to manage this juggling act, how to find that balance. Now today I'm gonna give you some tips and pointers and explain what to do, but in Bomb Mom, we really teach you how to do it. Okay, so check out the show notes. I'm going to put a link in there to book a call with me on my calendar. only talk for a couple of minutes. I do free consultations all the time. Let's see if a fit and it's an opportunity for you to ask me questions direct. A lot of women get on and they share certain stories and situations with me and we figure it out. We figure it out if Bomb Mom is a fit for you. If it's not, hey, Maybe you do the challenge coming up. And the difference between the challenge and Bomb Mom is the challenge is a way for you to get your feet wet with 30 days with me. We set a goal, we crush it, you get the Bomb Mom app, the workouts, and we see if this is a fit for you or not. Great way to start. We'll put the link to that in the show notes. And if not, and you're like, I don't need a challenge. I've done challenges before. I'm ready to like take back control and, and do this damn thing. 
bomb mom life is for you. So go to the show notes. I had to make sure I added that in. Let's dive into this. Let's let's dive into this juggling act. So what are the main challenges that we face, right? As busy working moms, some of the biggest things that we come across is time, right? We feel like we just don't have enough time for anything. And I say we feel like it, but sometimes it's not feelings and it's just reality. Like, no, I work from six to nine o'clock at night. I have a lot of clients and moms that work third shift and they're managing and trying to maneuver that. We have other moms that travel all the time. So time is a real concern and challenge that we face. What about the second one? What do I do that's effective with limited time, with my schedule, with the amount of children that I have, all the things what works and what doesn't work, right? That's a big challenge for people. And I know there's a lot of women out there that feel like they get up, they do the thing, they put their effort in, but they're like, I don't have time to waste. And I feel like I'm just wasting my time. So Melissa, like what freaking works? How about the challenge that we face? We need things simple. We need things that are easy. And we feel like, I don't know about you guys, when I look at a recipe sometimes, or I don't know, just things even I see on like social media for like cooking meals and doing stuff. I'm like, where do you even get those ingredients? When will I have time to make that? (laughs) I need simple. I need easy and convenient. Like that's what I need. How do I find that, right? So time, we need things to be efficient. We need things to be simple. And how about the other big, big challenge that we face and we run into? How about the guilt, right? Can we just talk for a second and we'll talk more about it, but can we just like be honest and real with each other that when you start one thing going in a direction, right? And you feel like it's a really good direction. Like I'm going in the right direction. I know I'm doing the thing, whether it's with your career and you're advancing and you're growing and business is booming or whatever, you know, or it's with your body and your workouts and you're like, I'm doing it. I'm making changes. I'm spending time in the gym and I'm getting the results that I deserve, right? Right. And then there's the guilt because you're like, oh my God, I missed this or I can't be home during this time for this or right. And that guilt catches up. And sometimes that guilt is enough to stop a mom. Sometimes it's enough to put an end to it. And then we don't keep moving forward because we can't handle that guilt. And then we're like, oh God, okay, no, I'm, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back home. I'm going to be doing this today. I'm not going to go to the gym today, you know, or I'm not going to do it like, okay, okay. You know, and that it plays on us. You guys know what I'm talking about. I know you know what I'm talking about. Here's the thing, you guys, you're going to drop a lot of balls all the time and it's okay. I'm going to let you know right now that you're going to drop a ton, right? You're going to drop so many and it's okay. How do you do it all, Right. How do we find that balancing act? How do you do it all, Melissa? I don't. I drop a ton of things all the time. But here's what I've gotten really good at probably in like the last five years. I make sure all of those balls that I do drop because I'm holding them, I'm trying, I'm like, oh crap, I dropped that, I forgot that, I forgot to send the kid to school at their field trip, permission slip and money. Oh, I forgot to do that. Oh, I forgot to wash the uniform. Okay. All those balls are dropping. Okay, fine. Make sure... I make sure, I make sure that all the balls that are being dropped aren't all mine. And yes, this is something that I've gotten good at over the last, I would say, five years. I make sure all the balls that are going to get dropped because we know that they're going to leave my hands. They, we know they're going to hit the floor. I make sure they're not all of my balls. <laughs> I'm going to say balls a lot. <laughs> We're just going to giggle and be really immature about it. We just make sure that they're not all mine. Okay. And you guys are going to make sure that they're not all of yours because this is super important. And we have a tendency to do this. The things that we let go and the things that we let drop are our workouts, are our nutrition. It's our sleep shit. It's even the clothing that we wear, the shoes that we have on, the undergarments. What? What does she mean? The clothing, the shoes, and the undergarments. Like, what the hell is Melissa even talking about now? Seriously, how many of you have desperately needed a new bra and you just haven't found the time to get it for yourself? But before school started, you took your kids all shopping and they all got all their school clothes and stuff, right? 
So they're all taken care of. But how many of you listening have desperately needed new workout leggings or you've needed new workout socks because your kids have like stolen all of yours or (laughs) you've needed new underwear or you've needed a new shirt for work for a really long time. Those are part of your balls that you drop that are for you. And then the obvious ones, yeah, you stop going to the gym. You stop working out. Or maybe you didn't stop, but like, you know, it's now Thursday and you haven't worked out since last Friday. And you know you're going to fit it in. You know you'll do it again. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you've dropped your ball and you haven't made time for you to go. And okay, I'll work out today and then probably on Sunday. Well, now you've only had two workouts for the whole week. And we both know that's not what you want. We both know that's not what you want. So one, know that balls are going to get dropped. Two, know that it's okay. Three, make sure that every ball that gets dropped isn't just yours. But Melissa, if my ball I'm keeping in my arms and I'm not dropping it, that means a ball I'm dropping is my partner's or my kid's. Maybe it's all good. It's okay. It's going to happen. Know that it's going to happen and know that everyone is going to make it. Everyone is going to be just fine. And I know that sounds like the stupid advice ever. (laughs) Like that just sounds so dumb, Melissa. Like, right? Like that sounds so dumb, like that it's okay and make sure they're not all your balls dropped and like everyone's going to be just fine. But I'm serious. I really want you to take a minute and look at like in the big picture, the big scheme of things. What hurts more, the fact that you forgot to sign your kid's permission slip or the fact that you didn't go to the gym? Well, in the long run, you. You missing a workout. And I don't say, and I don't, how do I say this? I don't mean to keep bringing up workouts as in like, you got to work out, you got to work out, you got to go to the gym. Like when I say workout, I wish I had another word to mean physically move your body, emotionally escape, physically escape, mentally escape build muscle. Yes, burn calories. There are so many benefits to going and working out. So when I say don't drop the ball of working out, like I'm really saying don't drop the ball on your mental health. Don't drop the ball on your nutrition. Don't drop the ball on actual physical activity that you know you need, right? Like, so there's, I wish there was another way to say it, but like working out when I keep saying that, I don't want you guys to take it like, oh God, she doesn't really wants me to work out. No, I really want you to take care of you. I really, really want you to take care of you because you're worth it. But the first thing to go when we're trying to balance and juggle everything is us. The first balls that we let go. Sometimes we toss them out of our arms. They don't even fall. We just toss them. It's us. And I want to help you guys figure this out. Okay. I want, I want to give you a couple more tips on how to manage your time effective, effectively and, and really make it balanced between career, work, kids, partnership, all of the things. So one, every single day before you go to bed for that next day, make a task list and really prioritize. And that can be as detailed as you want it or like as simple as you want it. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I I personally prefer simple, very simple. Like what has to happen today? I'm not gonna write down, oh, send this email at work and oh, do this. No, 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 no. It's gonna be simple like eat breakfast, go to the gym, make dinner, put in one load of laundry, talk with each child for 10 to 15 minutes, just alone time, you know, in addition to spending time with the kids and all that stuff. But like, I I just want it like simple. What has to happen today? And if there is like a major project that has to happen, put it on there and then prioritize it. Make your list first, like boom, write it all out. Like what has to happen tomorrow? Okay. And if you want to add more detail or subtitles on there or whatever, like go for it. But like right now, I want you to keep it as simple as possible. Then I want you to prioritize it. What must happen. Now, if you are that mom that hasn't gone to the gym and it's now Friday and you haven't gone since last Friday or it's now Thursday and you haven't gone through since Monday and you know that's something you really want to do, you must move that when you're making your list and prioritizing things, 
you must take that workout and put it at the top. And you know what? I'm going to tell you right now, that's okay to do. It's okay to take the workout and put it on top and put it above the 10 minutes of quality time with each child. (gasps) Oh my God. Did you just say to put my workout before my child and quality time with them? Who am I listening to right now? Yeah, I did. I said it. And you know why? Because you're going to be more present during that time with your child. You're going to have a recharged battery. Could you imagine coming home from work and being stressed and like worried about when dinner's going to get made and all the things. And then you're trying to sit down to talk to your kid and you have 80 other thousand things going on in your head that you didn't do yet. You didn't know. And you're trying to, got to spend quality time with her because that was on my list of things to do. Or you had a moment to take care of you, recharge that battery, step away from fucking everything, and then have that time with that child. Mm Mm-hmm. Which do you think will look better and mean more? Right? So prioritize that list. Move things around what must happen. Post it where you're going to see it. So you guys writing it on your desk and then putting it on your desk that you're going to get up and leave and walk away from does not nobody any good. <laughs> put it on your bathroom mirror, put it in your car, put it on the kitchen counter, put it on the refrigerator, put it somewhere where everyone's going to see. Fine. Okay. Then you're going to delegate responsibilities whenever possible. Now, it's a little tough one for me. I'm going to admit, here it comes. It is really, really hard for me to delegate. You know why? Mm hmm. Girl, you know why. Because no one can do what needs to get done like we can do it. And it's really hard to go tell someone, hey, the bathrooms are disgusting. I need you to go clean them. Damn well knowing it's going to be like 30% of what you want it to be done and what you could have just done, right? Hey, so I thought this would be a good time to give you guys a little bit more information on my online program, Busy to Bomb Fit Mom. If you are looking to be motivated, inspired, finally get off your butt and do the things that you want to do with your health and your fitness and your workout and your body and hit those goals, we need to talk. Busy to Bomb Fit Mom is a full online program. It's a 90-day program that's going to get you into the best shape of your life. Now, is it an easy diet plan to follow or all these amazing workouts that I'm just going to hand you on a silver platter? No. This program is going to love and support you. It's going to motivate you, get you heading in the right direction, but you don't have to do it alone. You're going to have an entire support system with you. You're going to have me as your coach, coaching you on nutrition, your workouts. I become your virtual personal trainer. So if this is something that you're looking for and you just need that extra push and someone on your heels telling you that you're worth it and it's time, we need to talk. Visit www.busytobombfitmom.com. Book a call with me. Let's see if this is a fit for you. All right, back to the show. This falls into play for me with work too. Like I really need to delegate that job to someone, but they're not going to do it like I do it. You guys, if you want to balance your career and motherhood, you must get good at delegating. It, it is a must. You have to. Now, true story of yesterday. This is a way that I am delegating responsibilities for sure. Yesterday, I got upset that I was working and putting in all this time and stuff. And then Sean came home and he was working in his, in his own way, doing whatever he needed to do for the day. And you know, I'm like looking around at the house and it's like a mess. I'm not going to lie. It's a mess. Like the floor desperately needs to be vacuumed. We got two dogs. That has to happen like all the time. The dishes were kind of building up. I managed to clean the kitchen earlier in the day, you know, whatever. But the bathrooms are awful. The laundry's piling up. Like it's, you guys know what I mean. You know what I mean? And that stuff bothers us. Like, I don't think there's anything that gives me more like calmness than a clean house. Right. And I was getting like triggered and mad by this. And I'm like, how am I going to juggle it all? And well, and then it turned to Sean. And then I'm like, God, well, Sean should have done it. But he's freaking just as busy as I am. Right? And I'm like, how do I fix this? How do I help? What? Other people don't deserve the wrath because I'm mad that I can't keep up. And I shouldn't have to keep up. 
You know what I did? I texted the cleaning ladies. Oh, yeah. We, Veronica, who has the podcast Empowered Unapologetic, I got Yolanda from her. And we call her. She called her. I call her it too. I probably got it from her. Yolanda and the Two Life crew. <laughs> and I text her last night. I'm like, I know this is a long shot. And I text her. And she's like, yep, I can come tomorrow afternoon. I'm like, oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. And you know what? You know what? It's like a hundred and I don't know, some dollars to get the whole house clean. Okay. And how many of you are like, I don't have the money to spend on that. I don't have the money to spend on a housekeeper. Like I can't like whatever. That's great that you can Melissa, but I don't have it. I'm going to tell you what, I don't have the money either. Like I don't want to spend the money doing something that I could certainly well be doing, but coming home to a clean home and I have time now to spend with my children. I have time now to focus on a good dinner. It's not rushed. It's not all out of a package. I have time now to do quality work maybe that I had to get done or other things, right? It's worth it. It's worth every single penny and I will figure it out and I will find a way. And it's going to help me not take it out on my partner either. 100% worth it. That was me delegating that stress in my life to someone else. Boom. I'm proud of myself. I am. I'm proud of myself that I did it. So I, I, I highly recommend finding someone to help you clean. Even if you are a stay at home mom and you're listening to this and you're like, I should be doing it. Well, should you? Because there's a lot of things on your list, mama. There's a lot. Should you be doing it? I mean, yeah, we do. Do we ever stop doing it? Seriously, do we ever stop sweeping the floors and vacuuming and picking up the bathroom and doing the laundry and the dishes and the cooking? No. But every now and then having someone come in to help us, huge huge. And if it makes you a better mom, partner, better at your career and everything, totally worth it. Right? Here's the other thing. Set boundaries. You have to protect your personal time. 100%. Set boundaries around when you go get your hair done. Set boundaries around when you go to the gym. Set boundaries around when you are putting out your yoga mat and you're going to stretch for a little bit. Tell everyone you're not allowed to come in and ignore me unless someone is bleeding or dying. Okay, that those are my rules. Do not call me or text me at the gym unless it is an emergency or an extremely important question. Do not call me with a math question that you cannot figure out. What? You don't answer when your kids call. What if someone was hurt? I know, but I know they're not. And I don't know why we're whispering, but I just talked to them like 10 minutes ago and everyone is just fine. And you know what? They would text me if they couldn't get a hold of me. She just wants to know the answer to question number 13 on her math worksheet. We know our kids. We know what's going on. Boundaries, ladies. It is okay to have them. It is okay to set them up. It is okay to share your boundaries and express them to others. This is what's going to help you balance things and be able to juggle that career and motherhood. Boundaries will get you there. So if you're looking for one key answer of like, but Melissa, how do I do it? Boundaries. Boundaries is how you are going to balance and juggle it all. When they are clear for you and for other people, it makes life easier. You then can flow with motherhood. You then can flow with your career. But if there are no clean boundaries with who can come into your door at when at work, who can come into your office, who can send you an email at seven o'clock at night, and then you'll end up responding, where's your boundary to set it down at six, right? Do you have it? Because it needs to be there. Boundaries around your workouts. Do you have them crossed off? They are untouchable and they are only for you. Because if you don't, if you don't hold them sacred, no one else will. And if you don't hold them sacred and you don't protect those workout times, guess what? Someone else will come take them. Oh, are you going to use that time? You're not? You're not going to use that workout time? Oh, I'll take it. Thanks. Thanks so much. I'll take it. Set up boundaries. Hold what is near and dear to you sacred. And it will help you balance things out. It takes you from being momzilla and completely stressed all the time. Just being, nope, you know what? This is, this is a boundary I have set. It's a boundary I have set. So hard pass. Can't do it. 
Let's talk a little bit about that self-care and support again and continue, not again, but continue on the conversation about the workouts and going to the gym and how important they are for your mental health. If you want to be able to do what you're doing now for a long time, if you want that to be sustainable, right? So if you want to be a badass woman in the gym, you want to be a badass woman in your career, you want to be the best badass mother out there raising just incredible tiny humans, then you must have self care. It's like, this is what it's like being someone who goes hardcore at the gym all the time. Every day we're lifting, bro. We're lifting. We're ripping the muscles. We're going again. Now we're doing hard cardio. Boom, 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 boom. Like all the things, right? You never stretch. You never foam roll. You never sit in the sauna. You never spend time recovering. Do you know what happens to a body like that? It breaks down. It will catch up to you. You will have bulging discs. You will have torn muscles. You will have hip issues and back issues and then neck issues. A body cannot be worked like that over and over again. If you haven't read David Goggins' book, he talks about this. I think it's in the end of book number one. Can't hurt me. It is. It's in the end of the book number one. And like, he literally thought he was going to die. I think I talked about this on the podcast before. And he thought like, this must be the end because no one can figure out what's wrong with me. And then he found like these two knots, I think on the base of his neck. And that man pushed, 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 pushed all the time. Go hard. Boom. Yeah. Mm, mm. I don't know why I turned that into a rap song. And it caught up to him. His body was a huge balled up mess. And it slowed him down and it almost shut him down. It's such a good book. Can't hurt me. You got, you got to read it. You got to be able to get through all the F-bombs and stuff like that. And if you guys can handle me, you can handle him. Okay. We're not the same at all. So that's a lie. If you can handle me, that doesn't mean you can handle him. (laughs) Total lie. I'm totally lying to you guys. But it's a good book and you definitely should read it. But these examples are the same way with your self-care and motherhood and your career. You must slow down. You must take time for you. You must go to the gym. You must be active. So picture it right now yourself. Let's say you're a teacher. You go to school in the morning, you're around kids, you're doing all the stuff. Let's say you coach. You're a coach, okay? You coach after, and now you're doing this with the kids and getting them, and then you get home. You're like, oh my God, we're all starving. Okay, dinner, I'm making dinner. And then, okay, I took my work home. I don't have clear boundaries with that, and I'm still working. Even though I worked basically from eight to three all day long, I gotta do this, okay? And you don't ever really shut it down, you know? And then it's like, I'm so fucking tired right now. I just gotta go to bed. And then it repeats. And now you have done that same thing Monday through Friday. Oh, now it's Saturday. It's weekend. Nope. You don't get to rest because your daughter has a tournament. So now you're off going and doing that. Oh, Sunday, finally get to rest. And I am going to rest. I'm going to lay on that couch and sleep and do nothing. And then you put that on repeat. A whole month just went by and you didn't show up for yourself once. Does that sound familiar to any of you? How long do you think you can keep doing that for? How long do you think you'll be able to go and show up at that school and teach and be amazing and then go and coach these kids and be amazing and have patience and have new ideas coming to you and be fresh and and full of life and passion and love what you do? Huh? How long? A couple years, if you're lucky. I'm being very generous with years too, because that might even be like just weeks or months. It depends on what kind of stress you have. I'm just using teacher as an example. I mean, that, that might be days weeks for some people in a different type of career, but for real. And then you're missing it. You guys, you're missing it. When you don't stop and slow down and recharge your battery, I'm telling you, you miss parts of your kids' lives. Even though that might not make sense to you, even though you might be like, wait, Melissa, how is me going away and recharging my battery at a yoga class or doing spin or going to the, you know, working out or or doing something that's self-care for me. I'm away from my kids, but now you're telling me that when I don't do that, I'm missing parts of their life? You are. Because when you go and you go and you go and you go and you go, you wear things down. You become numb to them. You become like desensitized to things. And you don't want to become desensitized in a way, I don't even know if that's the right word, but like to your kids. And when they talk to you, you're always annoyed because you never got a break. 
and you don't hear them the same. And then they're trying to tell you about something and then you snap at them. And I'm only sharing this out of experience. I don't got my shit together, you guys. I am sharing this out of my own experience, my own learning curve and my journey because I don't have it all together, but I've learned a lot. I have learned a lot that I can share with you guys. So really focus on that self-care for all of the reasons we just discussed. Now, to make sure that self-care happens, you have to schedule your time in. Now, if you end your day and you haven't looked at the next day yet and scheduled in whatever needs to happen, and let's just stick to workouts. Let's just stick to workouts. And you haven't scheduled in that workout. You have like a 75% chance of it not happening. You have to get you on your calendar. And this is not a new rant. (laughs) <laughs> for any of you. If you've been listening to me for a while, you know I harp on this all the time. If you are not on your calendar, you're just hoping and wishing and praying that it happens. It's just wishful thinking. And you know what comes out of wishful thinking? Nothing. Crap. Junk. Hopes and wishes. Unicorns and rainbows. No. You have to schedule it in. Get yourself on the planner. Make time for you. So seriously, tonight, Look at your schedule for tomorrow. Are you on there? Do you have 2.30 to 4 blocked off for you? Make sure you pay attention to drive time if you're not working out at home. Make sure you pay attention to traffic. Did you forget gym clothes? So you got to drive home and get them and go back. Like, pack your bag. Pack your bag. Have everything ready to go. It makes life 10 times easier. For the love of God, make sure you have snacks packed. If you are going right from the office and work, to the gym, what you going to eat? You have to have some type of fuel. Have extra water packed. That might mean filling two water bottles for the day, one for during, one for after, whatever. Schedule this out and then turn it into a routine. Every night before I go to bed, I pack that bag. I put a snack in there. I got water. It's ready to go. I set it by the front door. Like get into a routine. You guys all have a routine already. You already wake up, go wake up all the kids come back in, take your shower, get dressed, do your makeup, go downstairs, pack the lunches, pack up whatever, do what you need to do, yell at the kids again, get them in the car. Like that's all a routine. That's all a routine. You're capable of it. So just switch it up a little bit. And you guys ask for help when you need it. We had Jen Drunham on and she was amazing. She's the one that climbed all the second highest summits, the second seven highest summits of the world. She's incredible. She's got seven kids. And one of the best takeaways from that episode having her on was that she said, if you want to do big things, right, and being a career mom or just a really good mom and hitting goals and stuff, those are, those are big things. Whether you, you work or you don't, it doesn't matter. Being a good mom and having a successful life and having a body you're proud of, all those things, those are big things. If you want to do big things, you have to have a big team behind you. Hmm. Think about that one. Ask for help. Who can you get to help carpool with you? With your kids to and from practice. Who can you call in to help clean your house when you need it? Mm -hmm. Have a crucial conversation with your significant other. Hey, I need help on not every day, but Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Can you do this? And I'm telling you, if you are divorced and you are co-parenting, We need to have more episodes on this too. But if you are divorced and co-parenting and you have that relationship going on back and forth, right? For the kids, working with the kids, there is nothing wrong with asking for help because guess what? I guarantee they ask you for help. Hey, I got this work trip coming up. Can you take the kids on this day? Or hey, me and my wife are going to go do this. You know, is it okay? I guarantee you pitch in and you help more probably than they do. I don't know. Maybe it's a bad assumption. I don't know. But it is okay for that parent to help too and to ask them for help. Now, if this is a trigger for you and you have a horrid relationship with them and you're trying to avoid them at all costs, please be smart and do not ask them for help. (laughs) Do not open that can of worms if that is not a good relationship. I'm talking about a good relationships. Now, I have I don't, I don't know if I'm going to use the word good, good, the two words, good relationship, 
but we have a civil relationship. We communicate about the kids and stuff. It's not perfect, but we do communicate and I have that ability. Yesterday was not his day, but I said, hey, you know, if she's going to get to class, I have to do this and that. Can you take her? Or, hey, I'm traveling out of town this weekend or next Wednesday. I need you to take the kids. Is this okay? Can, do you have this ability? Seek help. Get help. This is how you're going to be able to balance it. This is how you're going to be able to juggle it. And it's possible. It is possible to have a smoking hot body, a successful killer career and household, and to be a bad ass mom. You can have it all 110%, but you have to start applying everything we just talked about in this episode, all of it, like literally all my tips and everything that we talked about and we laid out here. Like, I want you to listen to this again and write them all out. You have to apply all of them. You really do. You can't just put yourself on the schedule and, oh, I scheduled my workout tomorrow. Great. Do you have a routine to help support that so you actually show up to that workout tomorrow? Oh, no, I skipped that part of the episode. Nope, can't skip it. Did you have crucial conversations? Do you have a plan in place? Do you have boundaries set? Because you can go to that gym, but if you don't have any boundaries set and work keeps calling you, what's the point? So that's why you have to do every single thing. And I'm going to end on this. If you are someone who is ready to do all of this and you're like, okay, you have told me what to do, Melissa, but now I need the how, like, how do I really do it and keep it going? You need to be a bomb mom, plain and simple. You need to go to the show notes, book a call with me, and we need to talk. Get in in October because you guys, we all know the holidays are just going to get more and more insane. Holy crap, I feel like I could keep talking about this for a long time. I think I say that on every episode. When I have a guest, I'm like, oh my God, I feel like we could talk about this for hours. Oh my God, I feel like I could keep talking with you guys for hours. I don't know why that just comes out at every episode, but I do. I have like so many more things to say. So maybe I'll do a part two of this or just keep the conversation going. But I want every single person listening, woman or man, I I don't care. Everyone listening to be successful with their family, their career, their health, everything. And it is possible. I don't want anyone settling for second best because if you put things into action and you really follow through, it can happen. All right, everyone, go rate and review this podcast. Five stars, write me a review. It does really, really big things for us and make sure you click subscribe. Also follow me on YouTube. I am putting up little more workouts and stuff like that on there all the time. So make sure you follow me on YouTube, Melissa Vogel Fitness. Follow me on Instagram. It's Melissa Vogel, I-T-S, Melissa Vogel. And keep emailing me. Keep sending me DMs. I love it. Keep giving me episodes, ideas, and I want your feedback on this. I want to know what you struggle with, with balancing your career and motherhood. All right, everyone, stay safe, stay healthy. Until next time. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. This is given with the understanding that neither the host, practice of the practice, or the guest are providing legal, mental health, nutritional, or other professional information. If you need a professional, you should find one.